Micro Access Technologies in Circuit Test. This is a short presentation talking about some of the new access technologies which are available for in circuit test access. Before we look at some of the new techniques, let's just quickly review traditional fixturing. This has been very successful over the last 20-25 years and has helped to maintain access to the unit under test. But as boards become more dense, we are beginning to hit the limitations. 20 thou pads, 75 thou separation is about the best you can expect on traditional fixtures with the accuracies we have today. The trouble is that with 20 thou pads, we are actually affecting the performance of some of the very high speed signals. And the reality is we would like pads a lot smaller than that. We can actually get smaller pads and we can get uh, better separation by having things like uh, fine point alignment tools etc. But these add e exceptional costs to the actual fixtures and we still have this high speed signal degradation. So what's been happening is people have been looking at other techniques and over the, the last probably 20-25 years targets have been placed on the UT and these are becoming more popular as we move forward. One technique that was developed in the 1980s is the way good solder bump method. What this is, is the ability to open a hole in the solder mask over a desired location. You apply solder paste, then you reflow the board to create a solder bump that actually rises above the solder resist. This then becomes a target on the board. This target can effectively be any size. It can be scaled to meet any requirements. It can be a test pad, it can be a track, it can be anything you like. The important thing is it now is a target and an additional large pro can be used to try and hit that target. So we haven't got to worry about the accuracies of the fixture, accuracies of the UT. We're now using a very large probe to hit a very small target. As I said, this particular technology was developed in the 1980s by Rex Waygood and was used on a number of boards. It was actually documented in a book called The Surface Mount and Mixed Technologies PCB Design Guidelines written by David Boswell. This particular book went on to be one of the reference books used in the IPC rules that were put together over the next few years. Another technique was developed by Christopher Vascher back in 1996 when he was looking at how he accesses very dense areas of the board. His simple solution was to open up the solder resist over top of tracks in an offset pattern especially applicable to things like data buses or address buses. In this particular case he suggested using traditional probes that were actually coated or had conductive rubber tips that actually conduct the signals through from the tracks up into the in-circuit test system. Today we would use things like hot air soldered leveling to put a coating over top of those particular uh, openings and therefore they would be much more conductive. So this technique is very applicable today when we're using you know, the more modern board finish. Going back to the solder techniques, then in surface mount technologies written by Ray Passard, he also talks about test points and he also talks about small test points and here he talks about you know if you need to access points below 30 mil diameters then use the same technique we talked about earlier with the way good bump where we could actually use a solder bump and a large Agilent have taken this technology and in the Agilent also suggests using raised solder beads on the surface of PCB. Their main thrust is to do with signal integrity. By using these solder beads, as we've discussed earlier, you can actually have access to the board without any impact on today's high-speed signals up to about 20 gigahertz. As before, you would open the solder mask, you would apply solder paste, and then you would effectively solder the, the board so that these bumps would actually be above the solder resist. This particular technology is actually licensed and if you wish to use it you do need Another technique is the test access component which again was discussed in 2007 by Teradyne. This particular technique meant placing a mechanical object onto the PCB to make contact with a very large probe. 
these test access components would actually be placed on top of tracks and therefore would actually, as with a solder bead or a solder bump, would actually be a target on the board. Small target placed on the printed circuit board above the trace would actually give access to the board under test. But these devices would be placed on the board using the mature and reliable manufacturing process. So it would be like uh, placing a O2, O1 device or something similar. The important thing is that they would have no detrimental effect on signals up to about 20 gigahertz, the same as the solder bead technique. As I said, these can be commercially available devices, they can be O2O1s, can be any, any size or shape that you wish, as long as they don't interfere with the signal integrity. But the most important thing is they actually have two shorted contacts instead of one. So this is actually much more reliable than just having one. So in summary, all of the techniques that we've discussed are basically viable techniques for accessing printed circuit boards, dense printed circuit boards using fixed string techniques. Some of these techniques are what we call open domain technologies and free to use. The way good bump, the tag, the vasha, they're all techniques that can be used free of charge. The way good bump and the BPro technologies are very economical because they just use solder. But it must be remembered that the TAC technology is potentially more reliable because of its two points of